Hey guys, how's it going? It's Murder here with a, uh, a patch note overview for the first time in what, like four months, three months, three and a half months? Something ridiculous, but uh, it was all for good. Um, as you probably know, the dev team, the entirety of the dev team essentially has been hard at work on optimization and uh, the fruits of their labor are finally here on live servers uh, as of today. You've probably already been checking it out. I'm just getting home, so that's why the video is a little bit late. But uh, it's the PU01, which is interesting. I'm assuming that's for performance, uh, rather than like GU1516, so on and so forth. But uh, anyway, let's do it. The, uh, the patch note overview. There's a lot of stuff in here that's better off just read. Uh, it's not, especially in the performance section, it's not the type of stuff that I'm going to go through line by line. I'm going to point out things that I think are important, uh, but you should read it as well. It would make for a very interesting video if I just read every line. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with these videos, that's basically what they do, and uh, I will give my, my insight and thoughts on some things, uh, but basically just read you your patch notes for you in, a, in hopefully a more concise uh, setting. So anyway, they, they broke the patch notes down into performance and non-performance, uh, and first you have the performance-related stuff uh, categorized appropriately, uh, and this is basically just the game runs a million times better. If you haven't tried it on test or on a live servers, it is a great time to come back and uh, and play Planetside again or start playing it for the first time. People that would get like 30, 40 FPS are reporting 60, 70, 80 FPS. Uh, people can turn their graphics settings way up and, and get much better performance. I personally would average about 60 or so beforehand and now I'm averaging about 90 or 100. It is a huge, huge, well worth it um, investment of time and, and effort that they've put in and definitely worth you guys checking it out again. So anyway, a lot of this is uh, optimizing uh, multiple CPU cores, uh, optimizing the CPU, uh, obviously uh, disabling redundant things, um, audio cleanup, uh, this, you know, everything you could possibly think of um, that, that you might be able to optimize and we'll go down into animation and art and things like that as well uh, was done one of these things worth pointing out, they added an option in your graphics settings called smoothing that you can toggle on and off. You don't need to restart for it or anything like that. They recommend that you have it on. Um, I personally liked it off more. You can play with it. You're welcome to. They, they flat out say that it, it will likely make your frame rate lower overall, but, but smoother and reduce spikes. Um, to me, it felt like a modified V-Sync, if you're familiar with that, uh, and at least on the test server it was capped out at 60 FPS and you'd have to go into your user options and edit it to to make it higher, like 120 if you have a 120 hertz monitor or, or what have you. So you're welcome to play with it uh, if, if you're looking for better performance, but personally I have it off and I didn't have any issues. Uh, I, was, I was happier with it off uh, in, the, in the PTS, but try it out, especially if you're having any concerns or problems or anything like that. Um, going down the list, updating debris, updating bullet holes, I mean like there is everything you could possibly think of. Uh, level of detail was another a large one to uh, you know what what you render at what range at what quality um, to bring down uh, things and it's they even said it provided our largest performance improvement at approximately 50 percent uh, for network processing time so that's that's pretty amazing uh, that's one of the big sources of improvement uh, on the art end you'll notice uh, perhaps some different different uh, organized, I, I don't really know the best way to put this, but in, in first person basically, how you hold your gun, how your arms look, things like that. Uh, it was actually a little bit noticeable, but didn't have any problem with it. So if that, if that brings uh, better frames for us, why not? Uh, same with the textures of vehicles, it's pretty noticeable on like the Scythe and the Magrider, I think, uh, but uh, most of them uh, got some sort of optimization of their textures. These are always great for the uh, <laughs> the client crashes and the memory leaks. Uh, of course, the, as they noted, they're not done, but they have fixed several uh, both crashes and memory leaks, and that's always a good one uh, because that's that's frustrating, especially for extended play. As for the UI, uh, they basically overhauled the 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 most of the UI, and especially the HUD and the centralized HUD um, that you'll notice. A lot of people don't really. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but I've heard that people don't like how it looks in comparison to the old one, and I get that. Um, if I had to pick, I probably preferred the old one, too. Maybe it's just because I'm used to it. I like the little blocks, the little bars uh, uh, that were very easy to tell how much you had left, how much you were missing, uh, and things like that. But they did make a good bit of, of improvements aesthetically and functionally to the central HUD and those bars uh, between the original uh, OMFG 
P1 patch on the test server and what it is now to where you actually have little indicators at like 25, 50, and 75 percent health or shield or ammo or I guess for ammo and, and uh, utility it's, it's only 50 percent but nonetheless uh, I'm okay with it if, if it improves performance and it does that's the, you know the whole idea behind it uh, I, I'm alright with it you know uh, maybe they could pretty it up make it a little bit more uh, I don't know similar to the old one I don't really know uh, but I think people will get used to it. It'll grow on them. The more I played on, on the test, uh, I was fine with it too. So in the name of performance, I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, as for other UI things, there are mini-map optimizations. There's compass, I guess that's kind of related. Uh, weapon info itself, so like how many bullets you have, the reload warning, uh, your vitals for your health and your shield, and so on and so forth, facility indicators and info. All of that stuff has, has, like, every little thing has been optimized, so it, it, this really is an amazing patch. Uh, also worth noting that when you expand your minimap with, uh, with either, either the H key or if you rebound it to something else like I did, it used to block your location and your squad list and all of those things, and now if you're playing at or above uh, 1080p or 1920 by 1080 resolution, it will just shift those things over, so that's actually pretty convenient. Uh, in addition to that, you'll notice that it is largely focused on Indar. So while all continents were optimized, they did specific things on Indar to uh, reduce or remove a lot of things. I know that you've probably seen in one of the OMFG videos, uh, removing redundant objects and replacing them with something that's very similar, but doesn't have to use like another unique object or something like that. So changing a box to a barrel in one case or, or something along those lines would actually give you the same benefit, uh, but uh, much better performance for it. Um, same with same with removing texture. I think uh, Tira was talking about that in one of those OMFG videos as well, or rather reducing texture usage. Um, so that's kind of the the glaze over of the performance related. And this is all still for the most part related to performance, but not direct, uh, you know, cause and effect of of perfor performance related changes. So basically you have some pretty cool stuff in here. No more double loading screens. I think we all hated that, or triple loading screens, if you will. Uh, they changed the recommended server calculation, so hopefully that helps with faction balance even more. When they first did this, it actually helped quite significantly. I didn't expect it to help as much as it did, but uh, shifting the recommended servers over for new players really did help uh, originally when they made this change a couple months back, so hopefully it fine-tunes it even better now. The AI turret no longer shoots itself. I don't even know what that's about. I guess I don't use turrets, but that's kind of funny. But it's fixed. Um, AV turrets and projectiles uh, don't disappear in large fights. That's good. That's really frustrating to just fall over dead and, and then, oh, right, it was an AV turret. So that's a good change. Um, there's, uh, this one is huge. Uh, there are numerous client and cursor fixes, but uh, full screen windowed, finally, finally working. Uh, after almost a year. We're eight days shy of the year anniversary and uh, that, that one has been bugging all of us for a long time. So I'm very, very glad to know that you can tab behind your, your window in full screen windowed mode and not have that problem. Uh, for people who use it, they disable the GPU particles for the time being while they work on that. Uh, I didn't so it doesn't impact me, but I know some people definitely did. But no worries, they're working on that with the, uh, with the optimization uh, OMFG 2 and 3 that, that will be coming out in the coming months. So this was an interesting one that I wasn't thought would, or didn't expect to come. It's generally a small change. Spawn timers uh, would scale based on location or type from 14 to 18 seconds, where like uh, I think bases and outposts and that were 18 and sunders were 14. Now they're all 15, um, with the exception of the warp gate, which is obviously instant. Uh, but I think that's I think that's a fine change. I didn't expect it. I you know, was thrown off a little bit by it, but okay, I'm alright with that. Why not? This is also a really large change if you've been playing on the test server and uh, didn't know about it. Squad Deploy is not going to drop you in a drop pod anymore. It's going to just spawn you at the closest spawn point to your squad leader. So its functionality is far more limited. Um, and maybe that's okay. Uh, emphasizes more of use of squad beacons for things like that. Uh, so, you know, why not? But um, definitely something to keep in mind before you waste that cooldown if you thought you were going to be dropping in on somebody. Because oftentimes squad deploy would be used uh, by myself as well to just get on top of something at a base you were already at and now it would be completely useless to use it in that case and you're going to break your instant action timer which might actually, or you know, put it on cooldown for five minutes, which might actually get you to somewhere better. So that's something you want to take into consideration. Maybe hit that home key or the I key depending on what it's bound to for you or something else if you changed it. 
and see where instant action is going to take you every so often just you know because I think that that's generally a better use of the cooldown now unless you happen to just be really far away from your squad leader and want to get to them fast without using a beacon. Uh, this is another one that kind of just got thrown in there that I didn't uh, expect that the recon dart is going to send uh, minimaps Send, send found enemies to the minimap of all allies in 150 meter radius up from 50. So what that means is the dart itself isn't getting buffed in its range, but it's sending the information to people that are further away from you. Uh, so I think that's pretty pretty helpful, um, especially for the infill support role. That's the biggest part of the infill's uh, ability to play a support uh, for their uh, platoon or whatever. And uh, why not? Now more people can see it, and maybe in vehicles and, and whatnot further away. Um, you've also got the drop drop speed drop pod, uh, as well as the horizontal movement speed decrease, drop speed increase of the drop pods to make it, if you've tried it out at all, much, much harder. You can move a matter of just a couple meters, maybe, uh, in your drop pod, rather than really swaying where you go, uh, like you used to be able to. But again, in line with the squad deploy changes, I think that makes sense, and it's just you know part of the balance we'll have to get used to. Maybe it's frustrating in the short term not being able to plop on top of a bio lab that you're already at uh, quite as easily, or, or something like that. But you know, for what it's worth, forgive the Skype beeps and uh, wonderful taskbar. It's it's not actually a taskbar; it's a quick launch bar. Uh, anyway, moving along, uh, they. Also, uh, fixed sending tells across servers. So when people tried to send me tells from other servers, you would often just get an error, um, uh, even though your tell would actually get sent. So hopefully that is fixed now. I haven't actually tried it to where it sends it properly. Uh, if you didn't know that you could do that, you can. So there you go. Um, they've done a few changes to the world with regard to uh, day and night. Amherst Sky has been shifted by 12 hours so that uh, if it's dark elsewhere, it'll be bright on, uh, on Amherst as, a, as an alternative if you don't like playing in, in uh, particularly bright or dark settings. They also slightly darkened the Indar night, essentially, the dawn and the dusk times. Um, if you've been on PTS recently, you know what that looks like. Uh, it is noticeable, but it's not game-breaking, I don't think, uh, and as sad as it is, you can only always turn up your gamma a little bit or your brightness a little bit to offset it if you're having trouble, uh, as well as making more use of things like the IRNV scope and uh, thermals and uh, flash suppressors and things like that. There's also some lattice additions on Indar. Uh, I won't list all of them. I think probably the most notable is the Crown to Crossroads, which is... Uh, often one that, you know, kind of where fights develop in between anyway, uh, but it previously didn't have a lattice, so that'll be interesting to see, and then you can check out the other ones in here as well. Um, do note that they will be doing a pass on Esamir and Amorish again for both optimization and probably things like this, as well as an entire pass on Amorish for, uh, for lattice links and, and, you know, all sorts of uh, base updates if you've been following uh, Clegg and Malorn and Klaus, any of those guys, um, and probably others as well on Twitter. They've been posting a lot of images, really awesome looking stuff for Amherst, so keep an eye out for that stuff in the future as well. Um, they renamed the warp gates on Indar for the time being, but I'm sure it'll extend elsewhere to uh, be directional, such as northern rather than TR, um, so that it makes a little bit more sense when the, when the warp gates rotate. And uh, somebody mentioned this on the on one of my videos the other day um, that the flash and the harasser icons were uh, essentially one and the same. They were slightly different, and uh, I noticed after I saw that comment that on the test server they were uh, a bit more distinct. And now you'll have that benefit as well. Also, sounds like if you didn't uh, check it out that the Max is going to have its own minimap icons, which I've been pushing for a long time. Uh, I don't believe it made it into this patch, but hopefully in the very near future. And uh, then we've got ourselves some bug fixes. Uh, down on here. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of them. Uh, my my one X site for my Eridani is finally added after I got Araxium with it. So I don't I don't know I don't know if that's going to do a whole lot for me. But hey, thank you, Clegg and everybody for for adding that uh, because previously it just you could buy it, but it didn't flat out just didn't work. You couldn't equip it. So that's cool. Glad they did that. Um, they also I'm just going off of things that I think are relevant to me or, or relevant to you guys. Uh, occasionally you'd have two projectiles fire on the map, it would be kind of confusing and annoying when you use your recon detect device, fix that, so that's good to know as well. And then uh, the this removing the visibility cap on rocket, um, kind of kind of similar, and explosives that are placed on the ground for that matter, kind of similar to the uh, engineer turret issue, 
but uh, oftentimes you, you don't, won't really even see what kills you in very large fights uh, when it's an explosive like that. So that's good to know that that has been fixed. And uh, lastly, this one, I don't know. Fixed cases where player's corpse wasn't removed for the world after it's clowning or revived. Now, I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know if that means okay, you know, somebody declines a revive and you just see their character laying there kind of sitting up a little bit and that's that. Or, if that has to do with the cause of the bug where your feet as a corpse uh, become a hitbox, and I've been complaining about this one for probably a year now too, where uh, it seems like you get stuck on people and occasionally they will even absorb bullets if you happen to hit it at the right angle where you just can't walk over a dead body or you can't shoot over it in some very rare cases. Uh, and that happens, and that, that's gotten me killed countless amount of times. Um, and I'm not sure if this is actually a fix for that, if, it, if it's related or not. But uh, if it's not, then I guess I'm just going to plug that again and say that hopefully we see that get fixed in the near future. But that, uh, that is your patch notes. There's also a uh, post from Ryan Elam to go along with it. Uh, just kind of, you know, explaining some things, talking about it, saying about how great of a turnout they got, over 10,000 people. Um, on the test server during the, the testing of OMFG1, how you're going to see uh, phase two of the patch come to the test server soon with even more fixes focusing on some of the lower end machines especially, uh, the fact that they'll be releasing hot fixes uh, over the next couple of weeks and things like that, and uh, it looks like they're probably going to push out OMFG2 uh, in the coming months like they did one, um, and then eventually maybe even an OMFG3 uh, but we'll start getting into the point where we'll see some more content again, perhaps uh, in between now and then, uh, rather than just flat-on optimization and nothing else. Uh, speaking of which, I believe there are some additional uh, depot items, cosmetic stuff with the patch that weren't in those notes, and uh, if not, at the very least, there are items that have been in there but are now activating and becoming available, I believe in like eight hours or so, so uh, very soon they will be available for purchase. So it's worth checking those out as well. And lastly, if you participated in the testing of OMFG, you got a three-day EXP boost, as, as we all knew that you would. Um, and I announced that, and they announced that a while back. Um, you claim it on one character, so make sure that you, know, you hit OK and you accept it. You hit Yes in your notifications window on the character that you do want it on. And uh, then you have a boost. So that's cool. Thanks for, uh, thanks for helping, guys, everybody. Thanks for testing. Uh, thank you, SOE, for... for all of your efforts. Thank you, Ryan Elam, for taking the time to give me a call on the phone and talk about optimization. Uh, you know, uh, that was awesome, and, and hopefully I have been of some help and, and can continue to be of some help in the future. So, uh, I've been talking for way too long. So go go play your your uh, very newly wonderfully optimized Planet Side Two guys, and uh, I will be streaming as usual over at itsmurda.com or twitchtv TV now with improved frames. Right? You know. Same, same great product, twice as many frames, something like that. I have no idea. Anyway, be sure to check it out. I do appreciate the support, and uh, let me know what you guys think. You have your success stories. The game runs great for you. Let me know. You having problems? Let me know. Maybe we can try to fix it. Uh, and and if you do, uh, for whatever reason, still have problems uh, or are experiencing lower or the same FPS, do know that they're coming out with even more optimization, and they're coming out with hot fixes and all all those sorts of things. So hang in there. Uh, but tell your friends. It's a great time to either start playing the game or come back to playing the game. So hopefully we will see a uh, noticeable increase in population and you know just uh, general happiness among the community. And uh, yeah. That's it for me now, guys. Uh, take it easy. I'll see you on the stream. Have a good one.